I'm Sven Fechner, um, also known as Simplicity is Bliss or Simplicity Bliss. Um, as you can see from my profile picture, is a younger version of me. Um, <clears throat> and I'm actually going to talk today about a single aspect of um, getting things done and um, OmniFocus, which is around context. It's based on a, maybe one of the most popular um, posts I ever had on my blog around a fresh take on context. Um, first of all, you know, if, if you want to be really productive, do not follow me on Twitter and don't read my blog. Right? I mean, that's going to be a real time sink for you guys. Um, just quick show of hands: Who's struggling with context? God damn it! That's that's. I think it's, there's a there's something to fix on Mr. Allen there. Um, so why why are contexts actually um, important? If you look at the five stages of getting things done, you know we all love actually the first three. They are pretty cool. You know, co collect stuff, just throw it in, got it, fantastic, and then processing it. You know, where does you know what does that mean, and where does that go? Organizing it, fantastic. Um, the stuff probably half of you struggle with is doing a regular review. Um, so that's really you know where the problem starts, and then it gets really difficult when we come to the last stage, which is the doing. Um, and I've, uh, I'm not sure whether the, uh, you know, the announcement we're going to hear from the Omni group tonight about OmniFocus 2 is actually going to solve the do problem. I do suspect it won't. <laughs> However, do is actually where context matter, and context actually help you do things, believe it or not. And there's a good reason you're struggling with it, and it's because how GTT is set up. And I'm, I'm not going to argue with the methodology, which is fantastic, which is a collection of common sense, but there are a few things that have simply developed over the years. So if you look at how does GTD uh, work today, how do you select a task in GTD today? First thing is what David Allen calls context, and the way he has defined it is a pretty much a physical limitation that you have. It is, are you in that space? Do you have that set of tools available? Is that person in front of you? That's the first decision that limits the number of tasks that you can do at any given point in time per getting things done. Once you figure that one out, you've got to ask yourself, you know, what's, what's my state of mind? What's the energy level? So I think uh, Merlin, who's going to uh, talk later, has coined that example for me where he says, you know, if you're on a plane, you can't mow your lawn. So that's pretty clear context-wise, you know, that's not what I can do on a plane. But if I'm sitting on a plane, you know, I probably have still a number of tasks I can do. I can review a report, I can um, write up my next blog post, I can do all sorts of different things given that you know, I have my iPad or um, MacBook with me. And then you gotta ask yourself, what's my level of energy, right? If you're really low down, you're probably not gonna write a blog post because it's gonna be one big disaster. But you may be, excuse me, able to review you know, that stash of, of PDFs that you're meant to review, um, and that's a good, good use of your time. Then the next question is how much time you have. 60 minutes, 60, 600 makes a huge difference. Don't start a task that takes an hour if you only have 10 minutes. Yeah? So again, you would pick, after you've decided what your energy level is, you would put, pick the task that you can actually complete for the rest of the time you have on that flight before they call you to shut down all electronic devices. Yeah? And then I know, you know from the old world, we're all obsessed with priorities, yeah? so priority one, one plus, a, double a, seven exclamation marks, and actually it doesn't really matter in GTD for various reasons, but it's actually if you're left with two tasks, both, you know, al allowed in the context you are, state of mind you have, and the time you have, then you can make a priority decision. Isn't that fantastic? So <clears throat> that's kind of how David Allen um, conceive GTD and the way you select the task that you're actually going to do. Now the argument that I'm going to make is the book was published 2001 and if you listen to David Allen he has conceived it 
in a process over the 1990s, working as a consultant with various organizations. So as a matter of fact, um, when he conceived it, we were all still working with filofaxes. Right? I mean, we all been writing stuff down, and we were planning a day, and that day actually stood the way it was. As ima you know, imagine you had meetings sketched out for the day, and they actually happened, and you know, <laughs> things things just really worked. And you know, ever since we kind of moved on, right? I mean, we had this this electronic version of a of a file effects, the Palm Pilot. Um, some of you still know how to do that graffiti stuff, that writing on the Palm Pilot, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, we also had to carry around all the documents that we had on, on, a, on a disk, right? Floppy disk. Um, and this is just now that we have arrived in a state where technology is so ambiguous. We have everything with us every time. There is no difference between can I do email now in my front of, of an email program? Do I have access to this presentation you have? It's on your Dropbox or your iCloud or whatever it is. So basically, you can do pretty much everything every time, particularly if you're in a knowledge worker type of role um, where you, know, um, you just work with your computer. That's what your kids say about you. Daddy works with a computer and with a telephone. Yeah. So I think that actually ultimately changes the way we need to look at um, context. I would actually say the physical limitation to the largest extent, particularly for knowledge workers, has disappeared. Yes, there are still locations and people will talk about that in a second, but ultimately the new context is energy and time. That's actually the you know, two most valuable resources you have the time that you have and the energy you have. And we live in a pretty weird world where we need to define our way of working every day on a, on a, in, a, in a new way. So, you know, energy and time is really the only resources we control. What does that mean in practical terms? So really want to live, leave you guys with a few ideas. What is the new context? How do the new contexts look like? I often have those situations where I have just 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes before I need to get on the next conference call or you know, I, have, I have some other commitment. And I'm really looking for those tasks that I can quickly finish off. And I put them into context that is called basically short dashes, kind of medium energy, bit of time at hand, come on, get it done, get it out of the way. It's those tasks that take more than two minutes but not more than 15 typically. I have that brain dead context. Um, you know, I'm, I'm totally exhausted after, I don't know, six hours of conference call or a customer meeting or a presentation. I can virtually do nothing, but I can, I can do things where I don't really need to use my brain. It's a very standard work that I'm used to do. It is not to be mistaken with routines because routines may actually need your brain. You know, your weekly review that has been mentioned before is maybe one of the most important routines that you have in GTD, and you need your brain for that. So you can't put it into brain dead as such. Thinking. Every one of us has its own way, its own environment where, you know, the juices flow, where you have ideas. Somebody need, some people need to take a walk outside in the countryside to have an idea. Others need to get under the shower. You know, all sorts of weird things to actually have some ideas. So the context is very specific. The timing you, you need to have and the energy is very specific to it. You have those full focus things. You need to create something. You need to make something. You need to go offline, no calls, high energy. You're ready to pump it up and really you know, create something, which is actually one of the things we tend to forget in today's work world, that we need to create things every now and then. Calls is something you could put under short dashes, but I think human interaction is so valuable we need to put all our time and energy to it, so I have a separate context for that. I'll put calls into separate context. Last one is hanging around. There's more to do than just watching the telly in the evening when you are uh, on your couch with your iPad. Maybe you can research some of the destinations for the next family vacation. There are actually tasks that you can just do while you're hanging around. Yeah? So these are kind of the fresh contexts, as I call them. You can pair them with those 
physical contacts that just won't go away. You know, you need to be in the supermarket to run your errands. Um, you gotta be at home if you wanna change the light bulb in one of your lamps. Um, you gotta be in the office to drop in the printed out expense envelope or whatever it is. And you see people and you see, uh, you know, you, you gotta have agendas. And then lastly, two of the uh, most important maintenance contacts for me waiting for and someday maybe. To finish it up, what I've shown you works for me, it may not work for you. Right? You gotta find your own context, things that really work for you. Keep them at a minimum. You don't, no one needs 30, 50 or, or 60 contacts. My general rule is if you don't have two tasks at any given point in time in a context, you actually don't need that context. You probably can use the parent context for example, in agendas, I do not have an agenda context for every person I know. I work in a 60,000 employee company. I can't have a context and agendas for every employee in that company, and I don't talk to them either all the time. So many of those people that I don't talk to on a regular basis end up in the parent agendas context and don't have their own context. Was mentioned before uh, by Tim, don't fiddle, experiment. My approach is try something for 30 days, even if it's hard in the first few days, go all the way through and see if it works. If it doesn't, change it, but take some time, take 30 days. And that's it. And the real thing I want you to take away is, you know, go and do some cool things. OmniFocus is a fantastic tool, I love it. I love talking about productivity, but this is actually for you to make great things in this, in this world and not to fiddle with your setup, all right? Thank you.